Interested to see uh, that a second cabinet minister this morning has acknowledged that the law was broken yesterday. It was Dominic Raab today and Marie Trevelyan. And yet, Downing Street officially and the prime minister denying that the law was broken. It's a parallel universe, isn't it? Um, well, I mean, the fact that the police have issued these fines um, suggests that the law has been broken. But um, if I were Boris Johnson, I would be feeling reasonably confident this morning of, of surviving this crisis. Um, the police have issued 20 fines. Downing Street said, um, have said on a number of occasions that if the prime minister receives a fine, they will divulge that information. They haven't said he's... Uh, um, uh, received a fine. So, uh, you know, the logic of that is that he is not one of those people who've received one of those 20 fines. Um, at the same time, you know, things of politics is very, very different from it was in January and early February with the Ukrainian war. It, it, it's reminded us that there are very far more important things going on in the world. And this looks like a sort of frivolous indulgence. And uh, so at the same time, um, you know, the Prime Minister's most obvious rival, Rishi Sunak, his, his stock has fallen as a result of the sort of cost of living crisis and what many see as a bungled spring statement. So um, I, I think the sting has gone out of this um, crisis. It will rumble on, of course. Labour will try and make capital out of it at every opportunity. But um, uh, I, I, my reading of it now is that the Prime Minister will survive this. So, I mean, that might be the mood in Westminster. Do you think that's the mood of the public, people who lost loved ones? I mean, you say uh, the sting has gone out of it, but at the end of the day, does it matter? Do you think it is a frivolous distraction if the Prime Minister has misled Parliament, ha has lied? I think people are rightfully angry, obviously, when, you know, they had to, uh, uh, you know, people sort of had to have family funerals they couldn't attend and so on there. It's going to be extremely angry when there's anything or even remotely resolve, resembling a party going on in Downing Street. But, you know, at the same time, they can see what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, you know, the biggest obsession of people at the moment is can they pay their own, can they pay their heating bills and and can they, you know, afford to run their car and fill their fridge and, you know, the far, far more important issues at the moment facing people. You know, if there's a danger to the government, it's from the cost of living crisis, I don't think from party gate. And um, the, the issue of whether um, the, the Prime Minister misled um, Parliament, I, I think it's going to be a very grey area because, um, you know, he, he always couched it in the terms is, I am assured that no rules were breaking, I am assured. I mean, it's going to be very difficult for anybody to prove that he wasn't assured that no rules were broken. And um, I think the, the rules themselves were obviously um, very complex and very, very um, confusing for a great number of people. But you know, I think the Prime Minister's biggest error in all this was not having a socially distanced drink in the Downing Street garden. I mean, these were people who've been working indoors all day together anyway, just went out in the garden for a drink. I mean, there was absolutely no extra risk involved. Um, I think his big error was coming up with these very highly prescriptive rules backed up with stiff criminal fines in the first place. And if he'd left it much more to our own judgment for uh, people to use their own uh, um, sense of responsibility in the first place, then um, he wouldn't be in the position he is now.